So another day of spoiler season is here, and if you didn't see how yesterday ended, make sure you check out my episode on Danatha Benalia's Hope, because that is quite the spicy commander. I mean, I'm talking about, well, um, turning your commander into Eldrazi, essentially. Spicy commander. But don't go check out that episode just yet, because my goodness did this wake me up this morning, because this brand new commander is broken. So to find out what this commander does, well, let's jump into it. So Maria, Scholar of Antiquity, is, well, going to become an incredibly popular commander, I'm sure, and one that you should fear on the other end of the table when you're playing against it. Regardless, what it does is it's a 3-3 Elf Artificer that costs one red-green, and it says tap and untap non-token artifact you control add green uh that is uh, vaguely reminiscent of uh, one of the most popular and one of the most powerful commanders of all time with urza lord high artificer yes now i i know that is slightly different okay there is a, a pretty okay a major difference here where it does specify non-token artifact now clearly that is a difference Urza does not specify that, so sure, if you make a bunch of token artifacts, like, you know, the, even the one that Urza makes itself, yeah, you can tap those for mana, and of course that includes, you know, treasures, clues, etc, etc, etc. That being said, although this does not include token artifacts, still, this is an incredibly powerful effect, and uh, again, you're going to be able to generate mana absurdly quickly with a commander like this and we'll go through well plenty of examples why and how this commander can be easily broken uh and actually did, did i mention that there's a second part to this commander uh tap to untapped non-token artifacts you control exile the top card of your library you may play it this turn so tapping one non-token artifact gives you mana tapping two gives you temporary card advantage which of course you can easily capitalize on with all the mana that you're going to be able to generate and again keep in mind it does say play not cast which means that you can play lands off the top of your library with this as well or you know exiling it off the top of the library you know what i mean so, not only can this commander provide you absurd amounts of mana, it can also provide you absurd card advantage as well. Temporary card advantage, yes, but uh, the vast majority of the time, you're pretty much going to cast whatever you want off the top, especially since this commander works incredibly well with a specific kind of artifact. Also, one thing to keep in mind in how this commander actually has somewhat of a leg up on Urza in one aspect. No, I am not saying this is more powerful than Urza. I am definitely not saying that. But one leg up that this commander does have over Urza is that Urza is a mono-colored commander. This is a two-colored commander, and it has access to essentially, you know, like twice as many cards because of that. And of course, with access to red especially, we've got certain types of finishers that can help us finish off our opponents incredibly quickly. Because, yeah, there's a lot of synergy with red when it comes to artifacts for some pretty fantastic plays. But as a quick reminder before we go through the cards in this episode, if you go down to the description, yes, right down below this video, you can see that there is a link to the list of the cards I'm talking about on this episode. And, well... When new commanders like this one are spoiled, especially incredibly, you know, powerful commanders like this one that are probably going to become incredibly popular and, yeah, incredibly broken. Uh, yeah, the cards that work well with this commander very well might go up in price sooner rather than later. So make sure you check out that link and pick up some of those cards sooner rather than later. But now with all that said, let's jump into the cards. So, Mox Emerald is a banned card in Commander for a reason. I mean, it's an artifact that costs zero and it taps for green. It's also an incredibly expensive card that's on the reserve list. And, and I mean, this version I'm showing you right here is just, you know, a nice version to look at. But I, I believe this is actually a, a one of. There is only one of these, I believe, that was given to the 2009 Vintage Championship winner. I could be wrong on that. But, but yeah, I mean, just for display purposes. Regardless, the reason this is banned is because it's essentially just free mana. It, it is an artifact that costs nothing. You get it into play, and it can tap for mana. 
Now, yes, okay, Mana Crypt is not banned, uh, and basically, you know, Soul Ring does cost mana, but, you know, it taps for more than it, it actually makes. Now, should those be banned, that's a different discussion for a different day. Regardless, just know that Mox Emerald, like, you know, the four other Mox that, you know, tap for each of the colors, are banned for a reason. But, much like Urza, this commander essentially says, um, I've got a deck that is just basically chock full of Mox Emeralds. So, yeah, there, there's a reason why this commander is incredibly powerful, incredibly broken. I mean, there are like over 50 artifacts or so that cost zero mana. And, and so, yeah, you can essentially have like 50 Mox Emeralds essentially in your deck. Now, for an effective build with this commander, you're probably not going to have that many, but you're going to have a lot of them. And let's just highlight a few. So yeah, Dark Steel Relic is a zero man artifact that literally does nothing. It is indestructible. That is all it does. But with this commander again, it is an indestructible mana rock that costs zero. It has very green. It is better than Mox Emerald. Again, as long as your commander is in play. Or how about Spellbook, a zero mana artifact that says you have no maximum hand size. So this one just, you know, again, is a great utility card for certain decks out there. And now this is also just, again, a Mox Emerald plus. This is just a zero man artifact that taps for one. Plus, hey, you know what? Keep your hand around, okay? So have fun with this Reliquary Tower-esque Mox Emerald. Or how about even Claws of Gix, a zero man artifact that has pay one sacrifice a permanent, you gain one life. Now, are you going to do that? Maybe, maybe not. Sometimes it's gonna be helpful when we'll talk about some situations. But yeah, you can essentially just utilize zero mana mana rocks as a ton of Mox Emeralds with this commander in, yeah. To a certain extent, it really doesn't matter what they do. Now, obviously, we prefer ones with a little more utility. And again, I'll talk about some ways that Claws of Gix can be incredibly powerful. But still, we're going to be utilizing, you know, zero mana mana rocks, essentially, with this commander that really are just there to be Mox Emeralds. So again, essentially, the second you get your commander down, you can essentially dump all these in play, tap for a ton of mana, and probably just cast your hand and just get things going. So yeah, it can also be really off to the races with cards like Orochi Hatchery, Astro Cornucopia, and Ever Flowing Chalice, just name a few more. Orochi Hatchery costs XX, so yeah, I mean, we can spend mana into that if we want to, or we can just, you know, pay zero, and then it comes into play with zero counters on it, which is okay in a lot of circumstances, because again, it still taps for a greed. But, you know, if we do want counters on this, sure, you know, we're going to have a lot of mana eventually, obviously it's not going to take very long at all, pay five tap, put a 1-1 green snake creature token on the battlefield for your charge counter on it. And then next up, we've got some very flexible mana rocks, which normally wouldn't tap for any mana unless we actually put mana into them. But again, with this commander, hey, yeah, just pay zero for Astro Cornucopia or Everflowing Chalice. Astro Cornucopia essentially taps for one third of the amount of mana that we put into it, and Everflowing Chalice basically does that, but for half. So yeah, if we early on in the game just want to get these down and use them as Mox Emeralds, great, we don't have to put any mana into them. Later in the game, if we've got a ton of mana and we want to dump it into these, great, we can do that and they can tap for a ton. And yeah, again, I mean, I think I just mentioned, what, like, six zero mana artifacts, and uh, there are, again, like, 50 or so. So you've got plenty of options of free, essentially, again, Mox Emeralds for this commander. There is a reason it is broken. And of course, uh, we also have access to Unwinding Clock like Ursa does, but since we are in green as well, we have access to Seedborn Muse. Unwinding Clock says untap all artifacts you control during each other player's untap step. So of course, this allows us to tap our mana rocks again for, you know, a ton of mana or, you know, to exile cards in the top of our library. If we've got, you know, a way to cast things, you know, at flash speed, uh, we'll talk about some ways to do that here in a bit, but yeah. Being able to untap all of our mana rocks or all of our artifacts every single turn is absurd. And of course, Seedborn Muse takes that a step further. Untap all permanents you control during each of the player's untapped steps. So not only is this, you know, untap all of our, you know, mana rocks, or again, I should say pseudo mana rocks, whatever you want to call them, new mox emeralds, this also untaps our lands and everything else. So Urza's just going to be a little jealous that he doesn't have access to green like this new commander does. Next up, though, some cards that also deal with untapping, but more so untapping themselves, are incredible in this deck with cards like Grinding Station, Batter Golem, and Traxos. Grinding Station says, tap, sacrifice an artifact, target player mills three, and whenever an artifact comes into play, you may untap Grinding Station. Now, sure, you can sacrifice artifacts with this and mill players, and actually that might be a win condition at a certain point, and actually, kind of with that as well, there are certain times where we actually might want to sacrifice our artifacts so we can get them back in a different way, but we'll talk about that later. The important part here is, 
This is basically a two mana mana rock that can tap for green. And whenever an artifact comes into play, and again, we're going to have an absurd amount of artifacts in this deck and an absurd amount of free artifacts too, this untaps. So then we can tap it again for mana or again to get something off the top of our library. Things can get absurd when we've got even just one of these in play. And when I say one of these, well, that's because Battered Golem and Traxos can help us out in a similar way as well. Battered Golem is a 3-2 Golem that doesn't untap during our untap step, and it says whenever an artifact comes into play, you may untap Battered Golem. Now, keep in mind, like Urza, this commander specifically says on it, tap and untap non-token artifact you control at green. So this commander is not giving our artifacts the ability to tap for that color. Essentially, again, this is a way to get around summoning sickness. So we can tap artifact creatures like Battered Golem right away for mana, and again, whenever an artifact comes into play, just like Grinding Station, this untaps. So this can get out of control quite quickly. Speaking of which, there's Traxos, Scourge of Prug, which is a 7-7 trampling construct for this 4 mana. I mean, sure, we can attack with it if we really want to, but that's not the point. When it enters the battlefield, it comes into play tap, and it does untap during our untap step, but whenever we cast a historic spell, which of course includes artifacts, legendaries, and, well, okay, sagas, <laughs> it untaps. Most importantly, obviously, the artifact angle there, yeah. So each of these are incredible cards in this deck, providing an absurd amount of value throughout the game. Now, I will mention that, yes, there are other artifact creatures you are going to want to consider. I mean, there are, of course, even artifact creatures that cost zero, like, you know, Memnite, Ornithopter, and Phyrexian Walker. Now, each of these are just, you know, vanilla creatures, essentially, but again, they cost zero mana, so you can just get them into play for free, and they can tap for mana again immediately, thanks to our commander. Now, when it comes to including a lot of artifact creatures in this deck, though, I will caution you with, well... Creatures are more fragile than just, you know, artifacts that aren't creatures. Because obviously in a game of Commander, well, wraths that take out creatures are quite common, and those happen. And, and essentially, you are then investing basically in a bunch of mana dorks instead of a bunch of mana rocks, which is just going to be riskier. So when a setback does happen, it's going to be much more massive the vast majority of the time when you are utilizing a bunch of creatures as your mana, eh, not mana rocks again, mana dorks essentially. So just keep in mind that you are taking on more risk when you're leaning more heavily into artifact creatures than just artifacts. And that can really just come down to personal preference because with that added risk, there's actually some other things that you can do with artifact creatures. Because again, though it is more risky, then you can utilize cards like Vitalize, Benefactor's Drought, and Quest Renewal for a ton of mana. Vitalize is going to untap all creatures you control for just a single mana. And again, if you've got a, a lot of those artifact creatures in play, this is basically just a mass ritual spell. Same thing basically with Benefactor's Drought. This one does cost one more mana, but it's going to let you draw a card as well. And then Quest Renewal is kind of like a Seedborn Muse, essentially, for your creatures. Whenever a creature you control becomes tapped, you may put a Quest Counter on Quest Renewal. As long as there are four more Quest Counters on Quest Renewal, untap all creatures you control during each of the player's untap step. So again, there can be added benefits by leaning more heavily into creatures, but it can definitely be more risky than just, you know, sticking to regular artifacts instead of artifact creatures. <laughs> One more benefit, and actually please correct me below in the comments if I'm wrong on this one actually working, but I think it does, Ley Line of Abundance. Like other Ley Lines, essentially if it's in your opening hand, you get it into play for free, which, well, can have you even more off to the races as soon as you get yourself set up with your commander in play. Because it also says whenever you tap a creature for mana, add an additional green. Now again, please let me know in the comments below if this does not work with this commander, and my apologies for bringing it up if I did, but yeah, essentially my assumption would be, hey, okay, I've got my artifact creatures that I'm tapping for mana, now they tap for two mana instead of just one. So again, another potential benefit, again, a little more risky, but another potential benefit for using artifact creatures. Next up though, you can also get a lot of extra value out of your Mox Emeralds with Mana Reflection and Nyx Bloom Ancient. And when I say Mox Emeralds, you know, I just mean, you know, basically your artifacts that you're tapping for mana. You know what I mean, not actually Mox Emerald. Mana Reflection says if you tap a permanent for mana, it produces twice as much of that mana instead. So this doubles up all of your mana generation, including from your artifacts that are tapping for a green. But an even bigger effect, of course, comes on Nyx Bloom Ancient, which says if you tap a permanent for mana, it produces three times as much of that mana instead. Obviously, this is pretty absurd. I mean, again, if you've got a lot of zero mana artifacts, you just put in play, and then you're not paying, you're not paying anything for that. 
And, and then you just get, you know, if you with mana reflection, that's what? Two mana with an explanation, that's three mana. That's just a free, essentially, mana crypt or even better. So yeah, obviously, mana doublers and a mana tripler can be incredible with this deck. Moving on, on top of our commander's ability to, you know, just get us cards off the top of our library by utilizing our artifacts, of course our artifacts can help us out in a different way. Because, of course, we can generate a lot of card advantage or temporary card advantage or card selection, a lot of things, with Burning Prophet, Quicksmith Genius, and Galvanic Relay. Burning Prophet says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Burning Prophet gets plus one plus zero until on a turn, then scry one. So again, in this case, and, and again, the way that I would lean with this commander would probably be to limit the number of artifact creatures that I'm utilizing, you know, except for, you know, like those untapped ones, like, you know, Traxos and Battered Golem. Regardless, Burning Prophet can just help you scry a ton throughout the game when you're casting those artifacts, especially, you know, those artifacts that you're casting for free. You can just dig down through your deck, know what's on top, know when you need to utilize it with your commander's ability, and yeah, this can really help you out a ton. Speaking of which, there's Quicksmith Genius, which works great in tandem with Burning Prophet. It says whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. So a fantastic way to loot a ton throughout the game. Moving on, there's Galvanic Relay, which says exile the top card of your library. During your next turn, you may play that card. And of course, this has Storm. So by casting an absurd amount of spells in a single turn, which of course is very easy with this commander, yeah, we get access to an absurd amount of cards off the top of our library during our next turn. Which, of course, most of those are going to be, you know, probably zero mana artifacts that we can then, you know, just get into play for free for even more value. And, and yeah, uh, just be able to tap that for a ton of mana that we can cast all the other things, too. And speaking of explosive plays, though, let's talk about Sahili's Directive. It has improvised, so our artifacts can tap for mana, which is kind of ironic because artifacts can already tap for mana. Regardless, reveal the top X cards of your library. You may put any number of artifact cards with converted mana costs X or less from among them on the battlefield, then put all cards revealed this way that weren't put on the battlefield into your graveyard. Basically, uh, dump a ton of mana into this, get a ton of artifacts off the top of our library into play. And keep in mind, those artifacts are coming into play untapped. So yeah, we can utilize them for mana right away. Speaking of which, there's Genesis Wave, which acts in a somewhat similar way with this. Uh, and yeah, it's basically even better. <laughs> Real top X cards your library. You may put any number of permanent cards that converted mana cost X less among them on the battlefield. Then put all cards revealed this way that weren't from the battlefield into your graveyard. So, like Sahili's Directive, of course, this gets our artifacts, but obviously this also gets our lands and creatures, etc, 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 into play. So, yeah, this can be an incredible way to ramp us and skyrocket us well ahead of our opponents uh, again the amount of man that we can generate if we can put a ton into this next up now i did mention earlier that like a card like claws of gix could really help us out well i mean sacrificing artifacts can definitely help us out when we can then get them back with a card like creeping renaissance it says choose a permanent type return all cards of the chosen type from your graveyard to your hand and it's got flashback for five green green so this can be a great way to again get a lot of artifacts back to our hand get them back into play and again for those zero mana artifacts we're just basically you know netting mana by doing that and again of course that helps with etbs that helps with cast triggers that helps with you know a storm count it helps with a lot of things Moving on, another way to help is by utilizing a card like Shimmer Mirror, which not only has Flash, but it says you may cast artifact spells as though they had Flash. Now, I should also mention here, yeah, if you want to spend a ton of money on Valkanori, great, that can definitely help out too. But yeah, having Flash for your artifacts is incredible with this commander. Obviously, just playing instant speed so you can do things, you know, right before your turn is, you know, incredible. But you know, on top of that, you know, utilizing your commander's ability to allow you to play things off the top of your library, again, it says play this turn. You can then, you know, cast those things that are artifacts with Shimmer Mirror in play, or again, anything if it's Vidalcanori. But we can also get a different kind of advantage with a card like Mystic Forge. It says you may look at the top card of your library anytime you may cast the top card of your library if it's an artifact card or a colorless non-land card. And tapping, we can pay one life to exile the top card of our library. But yeah, with this, we can now cast artifacts off the top of our library. And yeah, with this, we can just churn through our deck incredibly quickly. And by knowing what the top card of our library is, you know, when that's not an artifact that we're going to be casting, we can utilize our commander, obviously, to, you know, get access to that as well if it's something else that we can play. A somewhat similar card, and one that might be a tad risky in some circumstances, but can definitely pay off in others, is Experimental Frenzy. It says you may look at the top card of your library any time you may play the top card of your library. You can't play cards from your hand, pay three in red, destroy, Experimental Frenzy. So when we need to get rid of this, we can, but yeah, for the time being, let's cast a ton of things off the top of our library. And again, 
with the amount of you know ways to generate mana and the amount of you know zero mana artifacts in this kind of a deck we can just churn through our deck in no time especially when we've got you know in combination with things like you know burning profit where we can scry a ton or quicksmith genius where we can loot a ton this can get absurd Now, I will mention that like Urza, um, I can probably imagine that a commander like this one is going to have a major target on its back. So, yeah, you're going to want to utilize artifacts to protect it as well with cards like, you know, Swift of Boots, Lightning Greaves, Mask of Abyssin. Swift of Boots, of course, gives Hexproof and Haste. Lightning Greaves, you know, the bigger boots give Haste and Shroud. A Mask of Abyssin gives plus one, plus two, and Hexproof. So, again, when a target is on your commander's back like this one, yeah, you're going to want to... Uh, suited up with some of these equipment to protect it and also keep in mind again yeah these are artifacts so they can then tap for mana as well i mean it's gonna be pretty funny when you're like okay i play swift foot boots um i tap my swift foot boots for a green and use that mana to equip it to my commander magic's a weird thing i know and also when you're trying to throw a wrench into your opponent's plans when it comes to you know them dealing with your stuff you can also deal with their stuff in a massive way with cards like ugin the spirit dragon and all his dust Ugins, well, minus X is what we're going to focus on here. Exile each permanent with converted mana cost X or less. That's one or more colors. Again, the vast majority of the cards you're going to have in play, if not, you know, all of them except your commander, are going to be artifacts. So this can basically wipe out your opponent's boards and, you know, probably keep most of yours intact. Yes, your commander might get dealt with, but uh, sure, just float some mana and recast your commander and you're good to go. In a similar way, there's All Is Dust, which says each player sacrifices all colored permanents they control. So yeah, again, this can essentially be a one-sided board wipe in many circumstances. Again, yes, you lose your commander, but you can easily get your commander back out. Another incredibly mean thing to do with this commander, like Urza, is you can utilize cards like Winter Orb, Static Orb, and Storage Matrix, because who doesn't love stacks? <clears throat> uh, well, um, most, most players out there don't love stacks, um, but yeah. These are incredibly impactful with this commander. Winter Orb says as long as it's untapped, players can untap more than one land during their untapped steps. So this can shut your opponents down while not shutting you down at all because, yeah, I mean, your commander allows you to tap this for mana. So just make sure you do that when you need to ensure that, well, you can untap yourself. Next up, there's Static Orb, which says if it's untapped, players can untap more than two permanents during their untapped steps. So just another incredibly brutal sax effect. And, and yeah, I, I will mention, I should have probably already said this. If you are planning to build around this commander, ask your playgroup first if they are okay with stacks. If not, do not include these cards. But if they are, yeah, also include Storage Matrix, because as long as it's untapped, each player chooses artifact, creature, or land during their untapped step, and they can only untap permanents of the chosen type that step. So again, ways to just deplete your opponent's resources and ways to, you know, ensure that you keep yours intact and, and yeah, just get even further ahead of your opponents. Next up, how about Trinisphere as well? As long as it's untapped, each spell that would cost less than three mana to play cost three mana to play. So this can make your opponent's spells that, you know, would normally cost less, cost even more. And again, this does not impact you because you can just tap it. Of course, you can also get a massive benefit out of Blink Moth Urn that your opponents normally would get. But again, with this commander, they're not going to get. At the beginning of each player's pre-combat main phase, if it's untapped, that player adds colors for each artifact they control. This can generate you an incredible amount of mana, an absurd amount of mana, and your opponents get nothing from it. Because again, you can just tap it. Next up though, let's talk about some ways to put your opponents out of their misery with cards like Reckless Fireweaver and Lamholt Raconteur. Well, I mean, even the better side, Lamholt Ravager. Reckless Fireweaver says, whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, Reckless Fireweaver deals one damage to each opponent. And Lamholt Raconteur says, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Lamholt Raconteur deals one damage to each opponent. And if it flips over to the knight side, well, it says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it deals two damage to each opponent. So yeah, things can get out of control very quickly. Again, Urza, eat your heart out because you can't use these. Urza also can't use Dragon Spark Reactor, which says whenever it and another artifact enters the battlefield under your control, put a charge counter on Dragon Spark Reactor. And by paying four, we can sacrifice and it deals damage equal to the number of charge counters on a target player and that much damage up to one target creature. 
So this is basically a, you know, a mana rock, a two costed mana rock. Again, this is an artifact. So again, essentially, you know, we can tap it for mana. So it's basically a two costed mana rock that we can then utilize to just chuck at our opponent and take them out of the game. Or we can also ping down players over time with Gearport Aether Grid, tap to untapped artifacts you control. It deals one damage to our creature or player. This is an absolutely incredible card that can really help us control the game. But of course, we can get even more artifacts into play with Golem Foundry. It says whenever you cast an artifact spell, you put a charge counter on Golem Foundry. And by taking out three of those charge counters, we get a 3-3 three, three artifact creature Golem. So again, obviously that can help add to our artifact count. And, and yeah, we can utilize those Golems to tap for mana as well. So basically we just get a free mana rock every three artifacts we play. But of course, these aren't the only ways to finish off our opponents. Because another way, of course, comes with Aetherflux Reservoir, which says whenever you cast a spell, you gain one life for your spell you've cast this turn, and by paying 50 life, you can deal 50 damage to our creature or player. Again, we can cast an absurd amount of spells in a very short time, so yeah, we can easily zap down all of our opponents with this. And speaking of storming off and zapping down opponents, well, how about Grape Shot? It deals one damage to any target, and of course, it has Storm. And like I mentioned with the previous Storm card, um, yeah, it's quite easy to up our Storm count when we have so many ways to generate mana and so many free spells in this deck. So, of course, with that in mind, we can also finish off our opponents with another Storm card with Empty the Warrens, which makes two 1-1 one, one red Goblin Creature Tokens, which, of course, is going to be an absurd amount with all that Storm count. Next up, a potentially high-risk, high-reward play that can really help us out in some circumstances is Rampage of the Clans. Now, this is one that you will want to consider, but not all decks will want it. But yeah, destroy all artifacts and enchantments for each permanent destroy this way. It's control creates a 3-3 green centaur creature token. So at instant speed, right before our turn, again, we're going to have an absurd amount of artifacts in play. Great. Let's just cast this, destroy everyone's artifacts and enchantments, and, uh... Chances are we're going to have a lot more of them than our opponents, so we can make a massive army out of nowhere. Now, again, obviously, this is a high risk, high reward play because we're utilizing our artifacts for that. But again, if we've got something like, you know, Shamanic Revelation, we're going to get those back. This can actually be a benefit to get our artifacts into our graveyard so we can get them back into our hands so we can again cast them for free. A and yeah, I, I mean, there are some absurd things you can do with that line of play on top of just, you know, taking out your opponents with a giant center army. But we can also take them out with a giant dragon with Hellkite Igniter, which is a 5-5 with flying in haste. And, uh, oh, by the way, pay one in a red. It gets plus X plus zero until I X number of artifacts you control. Yeah, this can easily be a one-shot KO on one opponent the second it comes down. Or, you know, we can take out our opponents with Hellkite Tyrant, which really doesn't even have to do anything. It's a 6-5 flying trampling dragon that just has to, you know, basically stay in play. Now, okay, I guess it says, when it deals common damage to a player, gain control of artifacts that player controls... Cool, we can definitely do that, uh, but we probably already have 20 artifacts, and if we do, being for upkeep, if we control 20 or more artifacts, we win the game. So just by keeping this around, we can just win the turn after we get this into play. But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Maria, Scholar of Antiquity. Yeah, I mean, this might not be Urza, but it's kind of like Urza Jr., essentially. And this thing is incredibly powerful. This card is broken. This commander, if I see it on the other side of the table, is probably enemy number one that I am most afraid of and need to work with the other players to take out. Because again, when you've got a commander that can essentially have a deck full of Mox Emeralds and a lot of other incredibly powerful things that work with them... That's an incredibly dangerous commander, especially, again, one that also gives you a ton of temporary card advantage as well. So, yeah, not only do I think this commander is, you know, broken and incredibly powerful, I think that um, a lot of players out there are going to be incredibly excited about this. Uh, can, you know, you know, different take on Urza, kind of. You know, they gruel Urza, essentially. And, yeah, I think this one's going to be very popular. Cards that work very well with it could definitely go up in price. So, again... Make sure you check out that link in the description below that's got the card list on what I talked about on this episode. And yeah, you might want to consider picking up some of those cards sooner rather than later. But also, make sure you're staying tuned to this channel for even more exciting quick takes and spoilers. And of course, check out my other quick takes and spoilers that I've already done. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. 
If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.